All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. It is now day two of our three day EKG challenge. So we are logging on just a touch early to make sure that all of our tech is working right. And remember, if you can join us on Zoom, um, please, please do, because we love to um, see your faces, first of all. Oh, hi, Carl. And also because we're going to do some uh, exercises at the end where we're going to have time to do breakout sessions that can only happen on Zoom. So let me see if I can get my PowerPoint up and running and get us up to speed here. And then I'll share my screen and we'll get running. So I want to hear from you guys how last night was. How did you feel about last night before we get started? Uh, so let me know in the chat. How was last night? And while you're doing that, uh, we have a couple people that are just logging on to the FB. We are now live officially. Um, but welcome into day two. We're going to do arrhythmias tonight, which is so exciting. Um, Noelle is helpful. Oh, good. Thank you, Tori, for posting the workbook. Thank you. Thank you. So um, just FYI, you guys, we do have a workbook. If this is your first night joining us, it looks like this. And if you need it, there's a link that Tori just posted that you guys can print this out because we'll be doing this page tonight together and working on it hands on the end. Um, I know Kimberly, I, we enjoy it too. Michelle and I um, really do love working with you guys um, and getting to see your faces and talk to you. But I wanted to announce one really special thing and I'm glad you're here, Carl, because this is an honor of you. Um, we have, Joelle says, very helpful. Me too, me too. I We're gonna do that hopefully from now on. But um, Carl is actually here with us on Zoom. So Carl, yay. And Carl is one of our longtime EMS folks. You can see there's a picture of him. And um, just, I have chills, you guys can probably see. He actually said, you know what? I want to give back to some of the students that are taking this class and give them access to the paid course that you're doing next week. So he will be giving away, well, we were giving away for him, two paid scholarships. So for two lucky people, he has already paid your way to come to our class that starts next week on Monday, where we're going to do a basic EKG uh, foundations um, class. So that's super exciting. We'll be giving those away tomorrow night. And at least one of them is going to go to an EMS person. So if you're EMS, let us know. Um, because yeah, it's awesome. It's so awesome because you will definitely be in the running for one of the scholarships. Okay, so that's going to be tomorrow. Yeah, that's just the way our group is. Um, so in case in case you're new here, I know a lot of you aren't, which is so exciting to see you come back. But in case you're new here, that's what we believe in. We believe in uh, completely paying it forward. And Carl is a great embodiment of that. So thank you, Carl. Yay, everybody say yay, Carl. So we'll be giving those away tomorrow. And um, so stay tuned for that. Tonight, though, I want to tell you that we have to do the drawing really quick for last night's prize. Okay, so remember last night, you guys entered the drawing to be in it to win it for the EKG workshop kit. Now, this is something that we actually send to you as a welcome gift when you actually join our paid class that we start next week, which we'll tell you more about, but you actually get a bunch of goodies in here. So you put in your name if you wanted to be entered in the drawing. So let me draw that before we get started and then we can get down to the lecture. Okay, so on live TV, not TV, we're going to draw the winner of the, oh my gosh, I can't even read my writing. Uh, hold on. The live winner is, maybe you guys can read that. I think it says Valeria. So Valeria, I think you're actually the winner of, um, yeah, hey, there she is. She's waving on screen. Valeria, you gotta get me your address so I can send out your your box because you won everything in this, the art cat window, the workshop, the crayons. I know. So see so guys, you hang out with us, you win prizes, it's cool. So Valeria, private message me in, not in um, Zoom, but in Facebook. Okay, so let's get kicking off with our lecture for today. So we wanted to just quickly review a little bit that we talked about yesterday regarding the waves to kind of, you know, kick off the cobwebs and then jump into the knowledge. So the first question we have for you is, how big is a pathologic Q wave? Do you guys remember? Can you type in the chat, how big is a pathologic Q wave? Do you remember the answer to that, you guys? We talked about that, that the pathologic Q is at least a third the height. Good job. Everybody got it right. A third the height of the QRS, strong work. Pathologic, meaning bad. Okay, good work. That's question number one. Question number two, is what is a normal PR interval? Which one of these is a normal PR interval? Remember, that's the time going from 
the SA node down to the AV node. And good job, Jovita, Jovita on Facebook. Um, yes, okay, so we have a couple of votes for A, but most votes for B, and yes, um, Jovita on Facebook and also everybody on Zoom, strong work, it is actually 120 to 200. So good job, Bria also in the house, nice job. And then lastly, uh, what I wanna cover for you real quick is the conduction in the heart. So a lot of you know this already, but if you don't, this, is, this might be new knowledge for you. So what we have that's going on behind the scenes in the conduction, and I literally drew this for a patient today. It was so fun. She, she wanted to learn it. I was like, okay, let's do it. So what you have here is the SA node right here. Okay, that's the pacemaker of the heart. It sends the impulse down to the AV node. Okay, the AV node then sends the message down the bundles, the left bundle and the right bundle. That's how everything should go. Now, we're not gonna talk about bundle branch a lot on um, this, you know, because we're doing basic arrhythmias, but essentially when we talk about bundle branch blocks, the concept is that one of these little bundles, the electricity is not going through it. It's the conduction is not right. So it's blocked. Okay. And that's a bundle branch block. And there's also little two little fascicles. There's another fascicle on the left bundle. So it's actually divided into two. And when you have just half of that block, that's called a hemi block. So if you've ever heard that term and wondered, that's what's going on there. Now, knowing the intrinsic rate of these little nodes will help you solve who is actually running the heart. So we want the SA node to be running the heart and it runs the heart about 60 to 100 beats per minute. And you know that you always wanna see normal sinus on your rhythm strip, okay? So that's what we hope to have happen. But let's just say that the sinus node is not working. Let's say it got assassinated, for example, by an MI. That's possible. If that happened, then this is what the EKG would look like. Okay, so what is happening here on this rhythm strip? Let's see if we have any guesses. No P wave. Nice job, Heidi. Nice job. No P wave. That's true. And then the question becomes what's the rate? Okay, so it looks a little slower, right? It looks a little Brady ish. I agree, Wendy, a little Brady. But if there's no P wave, then it's not the sinus because the, the way I always remember this is one of my instructors used to say, and it sounds so silly, she'd say, sinus makes P. And I was like, what? <laughs> sinus makes P. If you don't see P, the sinus is not in charge. And like, for some reason, that stuck with me. So sinus node makes P wave and there's no P. So therefore, it could be ventricular, but we have to ask how narrow the QRS is. So this is about 40 to 60 beats per minute, and there is no P. So this is actually an example of the AV node running the heart. I think that this drawing makes this look a little wide. So if this was more than three small boxes, we would think about ventricular because anything wide is most likely coming from the ventricles. Okay, that's another little tip, wide coming from ventricles. Now, if you were to take out the SA node and the AV node, then the next guy in line would take over and run the heart. So that would look like this. Now you can see the difference. How would you describe this? How would you guys describe this, this rhythm? Oh, hey, Muna's back on with us on Zoom. And remember guys on Facebook, if you wanna join on Zoom, uh, you can go in the breakout sessions with us at the end. So we really want to have you on Zoom. We'll put the Zoom link in the in the feed again. So any guesses on? Okay, yes, we have uh, idioventricular Joel. Yes, ventricular escape. Um, yes, this is actually indeed an idioventricular. So yes, good job. So the SA is not there because there's no P. The AV is not running the heart because it's a wide QRS, more than three small boxes. That's the number, right? Three small boxes. And it's wide, which means it's coming from the ventricles. So this is about mm, probably 20 to 40 on a heart rate, but it's still regular, okay? Now, lastly, what would we call this? And I hope that none of you ever have to see this rhythm, but if you saw this, what would this be called? What would this be called if you saw this? Thank you, Tori and Michelle for posting the Zoom link. 
So if we saw this, this would be called, this is a hard one. This is a hard one. And thank you, Ruben, also. Yes, Brandy and Wendy. Um, Kelsey, yes. Go, okay, good question. So Wendy says, dying heart. Absolutely. 100%. Brandy says, agonal. Spot on, Brandy. Good job. And Kelsey says, is there a pulse? It's a good question, right? If there wasn't, you would call this, what would you call it if there was no pulse? And there, there probably isn't a pulse with this, but what would we call it if there was no pulse? Yes, PEA. Nice, you guys are on top of it. What does PEA stand for? Let's type that in the chat for anybody who doesn't know. And so that's what is going on behind the scenes, okay? Um, Lewis cannot hear anything. Try putting your volume up because um, I think everybody else can hear. Um, otherwise, try logging in again, Lewis. That might help. So yes, PEA, pulseless electrical activity. Nice teamwork, you guys, in the chat. I'm loving it. Okay, now this is the secret sauce. Good job, Rhea. Rhea on FB. So good job, you guys. So let's talk about the three questions you're going to ask yourself to solve the arrhythmia. Can, to solve the arrhythmia, okay? So the questions are, is it narrow versus wide? If it's narrow, it's coming from the top of the heart. If it's wide, it's coming from the bottom. Is it fast versus slow? So fast versus slow. Oh, good. The sound is working, Lewis. Good. Glad, glad, glad. Sometimes it's actually a Wi-Fi issue too. So fast versus slow. And then regular versus irregular. Okay. So regular rhythms are things like sinus, things like SVT, even ventricular tachycardia is regular. And a lot of times that helps you sort out what the arrhythmia is. So the so narrow versus fast, fast versus slow, and then regular versus irregular. And the other question you're always asking yourself is the sinus node working? And we know sinus makes P, right? So we're looking for a P. Let's just say this isn't actually part of our talk, but let's just say it was. If this EKG that's on the screen, let's just say this was actually one we were going to talk about. Well, you can see a little nub right here. What do you guys think this is? This little nub. Yeah, Tori, sinus makes pee. Exactly. What do you guys think? What is this little wave right here? You guys remember from yesterday? What do you think this is? If what we know is true, sinus makes pee. Yes, good job, Muna. Noel, these are pee waves, good. Okay, let's go over here. What is this here? This is called a, what type of complex? What is this complex here? Yes, QRS, everybody's on top of that. And then this segment right here, do you guys remember what that is? That segment is the ST segment, nice job. And then finally, the last wave here, this is actually called the, yes, Noelle is on top of it, the T wave. Okay, what's the rule? Let's see how much you remember. What's the rule about the T wave? The T wave should be closer to, what then what? The T wave should be closer to what then what? Desmer, ah, yes, closer to the QRS than the P. Yes, you guys are on top of it. Oh my gosh, so impressed with you guys. Okay, good job. All right, so let's keep going and let's talk about normal sinus. Okay, so this is what we're always hoping to see. Thank you, Tori, for always emphasizing the important points. You can look in the notes for Tori. Um, so sinus, normal sinus rhythm, is somebody who has a rate between 60 and 100, who has a P, and the P is upright. It's beautiful. It's not notched. It's not too big. It's not too small. And it comes before the QRS. And we also are looking to see that the P wave has the same morphology, okay, same shape and they do. And they're also the same distance away from the QRS, okay? So the P, the mom stands the same distance away from the dad in every complex. That's also what we're looking for. And then lastly, looking at this, when you ask yourself that critical question, what you're asking yourself is, is the R to R, because these are the R's, remember these little waves right here? Is the R to R regular? And it is. And that's always what we're looking for. So this is what we want to see on every single strip. Do we always see this? No, we can see different, uh, different stuff happening, right? So uh, let me click out of this so we can proceed on. 
So this is something that we hope to never see. This is somebody with no pulse. So let me ask you guys a question. What would you do if you saw this on your monitor? And let's just add a little flavor. Your patient was talking to you with this. What would you do? No, oh, yes, Wendy says, check the leads. <laughs> yes, check the patient, check the leads. I like those answers, guys. Okay, if the patient wasn't talking to you, pulse check. Okay, good, yes, nice, pulse check. This would technically be called what? What would we call this here? This is, this is asystole, nice, okay? So asystole and a GCS Glasgow coma scale of three. A rock also has a Glasgow coma scale of three, right? I always thought that was kind of funny. So asystole, not good. Now, what would we call this rhythm if we had it? Now, I wanna just kind of ask you two questions on this. What is the underlying rhythm here? Because there's an underlying, and then there's something happening in the middle. And what I would do to help sort this out in real life is I would take and measure, and I would measure the distance between the R to R. I would measure that distance, okay? And it does look to be the same amount, so it is regular. And oh, Andrea in the house, busting out the answers. Um, Kelsey, nice, okay? So what we have answer-wise, some sinus rhythm with non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. That's very good, you guys. You guys, I can't even fool you. I can't, can't get nothing by you. So yes, we know this is sinus because we have, let me just grab my little yellow pen to show you. We've got these beautiful P's, right? And then they're the same distance from the QRS and the R to R is normal. And then we have these wide beats here, okay? Whenever you have a wide, we know that comes from the ventricle. We also know it's fast and we also know it's regular. So this is a non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. Okay, so good answer. You guys rocked it. Okay, so let's talk about this one. What do you think about this EKG? Is the machine right? And what are the questions we ask? Well, we ask, is it regular or irregular? Well, I'm just gonna show you a little trick. This is down here. This is a rhythm strip. So um, little side note, try not to ever assess the rhythm from just your three second strip right here. Okay, always use the long lead. And for this particular EKG, they're pulling out V1 and dropping it down for you here for a long lead. So then you ask yourself, is it fast or slow? Fast. Is it regular or irregular? Regular. Is it narrow or wide? Narrow. So what do you guys think? Is the machine right on this one? Now I've thrown the machine under the bus. So you guys are all like, I don't know, Jen. But yes, Kelsey, spot on. Wendy, yes, Brandy, Damaris. Okay, you're right. These are, this is a SVT, okay? And the classic is the fast, regular, narrow. So one thing I just want to point out to you, not that we're covering it tonight, but I just can't resist. You know how I am. I just, I got to go there. I, I just want to show you one little tidbit that's important. And that is that the ST segment, remember how we talked about the fact that we're always scrutinizing this? How would you describe these ST segments? And now we're not doing 12 leads tonight, but you know, you guys know I can't resist. How would you describe these? What would you say? So these are, yeah, depressed. Ooh, Kelsey, Kelsey. <laughs> Jen says they're sad. Yes, they are sad. They're depressed. Michelle has heart voices to go along with that, um, for sure. <laughs> and those of you who get to go to Michelle's class tonight, I'm sure she'll do some voices for you. So um, Kelsey, actually, you are a rock star, Kelsey, because Kelsey called it. This is actually widespread ST depression because of what's called demand ischemia. Okay, um, <laughs> strong work, yeah. So you heard Michelle's heart voices in your head. I know, me too, and you, you always will. And so supraventricular tachycardia, when you have a fast rhythm, it will sometimes not perfuse the coronary arteries and it will make it look like the arteries are not getting enough oxygen, okay? So yeah, good job. Okay, let's see if we can do the next one. All right, um, what, so, <laughs> What is this rhythm? And also, yes, you are all on top of it. Great work, I know, exactly. So yes, here's a common theme. People will say, 
you know what? I'm good with my EKG knowledge because I have the big stuff down. I know how to spot VFib and asystole and VTAC. And I'm like, okay, that's great. But you're probably not going to see that on your average day. You may need to know a little bit more than this. However, I will say that yes, all of you are calling this correctly. It is VFib um, or unorganized activity. Yes, it is. And so again, every time you have a Sicily or Vita or VFib, you want to just go ahead and double check your leads. I know that makes me super old school because most of the monitors don't even have that issue anymore, but I still do. Check my leads, check my patient every time I have something that's potentially lethal. Okay, so it's not artifact. Um, it's definitely uh, VFib. Okay, so this is another one we'll just uh, pop quiz you on really quick. And just to kind of orient you, this was a patient that was referred for bradycardia. And the heart rate, just to show you, is up here, right here, 52, okay? So it's slow. So now what we have, just to orient you to where the rhythm strip is, you've got right here, this is your rhythm strip being pulled out, okay? This is V1 going down into a long lead for you. So the question that you have to ask yourself is who's running the show? Well, from the heart rate, it's a little slow, right? The next question you, you have is, is there a P? Well, what do you guys think? Is there a P? It's a tiny, yeah, it's there, right? Randy says it's tiny, but it's there. The P's look funky, okay. They're doing the funky Cole Medina. Was that a song from a long time ago? So, uh, okay, yes, everybody says we have P waves. Now, the next question would be, is the rate, right? It's too slow. So if, it's a, if it has P waves and the P waves are the same morphology shape and distance away from the dad, mom, dad are the same, then we could say that, yes, this is a sinus brady. And again, Kelsey on the ball, this is a sinus bradycardia, okay? Because you have a P, it's, it's under 60 and the sinus node is running the heart. It's just running it a little bit slower, okay? So um, yes, Tori says that was a song. It was a long time ago. It was a good song. So this is a sinus brady. Also, I know I have to go there. Um, Michelle's laughing because she's like, I know you're going to go there. So does anybody see anything else that's bothering them on the CKG? That's a little bothersome. Um, so yeah, it does look like a first degree block when you actually march it, but it's not yet. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you that. So we talked about first degrees a little bit, but remember the big line, when you find an R on the big line and you go all the way back, this is your point two zero. So I think it's still within range. It's being calculated as 172. I'm not sure that really is true. It did look a little far to me too, but I think it's still within. Um, Jen says she didn't like the tall T's. I agree. I don't like those tall T's. They're very tall. Um, in fact, the T wave here is like, let me actually get my other drawing tool. The T wave here is bigger than the baby is bigger than the dad. That's a problem. Okay. The baby should never be bigger than the dad. Um, some P waves are inverted. So Brandy, what, let me, I think I'm covering up lead one. Maybe it's only one. But the other thing that might be going on is a little bit of, wow, I'm not a good line drawer with this, am I? There might be a little ST elevation happening here, potentially, right? And so whenever you have Brady and you have a little ST elevation and you have tall T waves, what do you think about as a possibility? What do we think about? Yeah, ST elevation lead three, Kelsey said. Yep, P waves are inverted. Yep, they maybe are and they are. Um, I, I'm not able to see lead one because I'm covering it with chat, but yeah. Oh, good one, Wendy. Wendy says with tall T waves, she thinks about hyperkalemia. Um, Bria also didn't like the T waves. So hyperkalemia is definitely one thing to think about, but also ischemia. Good, Myra, nice, nice job. So yes, hyper K and hyperkalemia are two things you would think about. Okay, so um, we're gonna do a case. Now this is not a real patient's face just to, to advise you, right? This is some random picture I, I found, but it seemed to fit the case. So uh, real case though, 32 year old male who complained of palpitations. Now, anybody who knows me, you know, that's like my favorite complaint ever. And uh, he said that he drank a lot. What do you guys think when somebody says they drank a lot? What do you usually 
have in your mind as a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, Holiday Heart. Oh, nice. Yes, a lot of alcohol. So they drank a lot of alcohol. Okay, and that's what he did. He also didn't sleep for four days and he drank a lot of energy drinks. So um, I think you're on to something, Kelsey. Again, Kelsey, because the drinking a lot of alcohol and drinking energy drinks can cause a lot of problems in the heart, particularly in the top of the heart. It can also cause heart failure, right? When you, know, you drink a lot, an alcoholic cardiomyopathy. But our differentials, okay, this is actually my dog, Remy, our, my little German shepherd. So he actually helps us in class sometimes. So he wants to know what are our differentials for this patient? So not sleeping, drinking a lot. What do we expect to see on his EKG when we do it? I know that Kelsey said holiday heart. Andrea says atrial fib. Jen says AFib, <laughs> yeah. Jen, Jen knows a lot about this. Um, everybody says fast, yes. Brandy and Kizzy, good. Um, and Tori loves Remy. Remy loves you too, Auntie. Um, so yeah, PVCs, that is a possibility, right? Um, because we worry about his ejection fraction. So good, good job. We also think about getting some labs, like Kelsey said, um, electrolyte abnormalities. And what, what lab would we absolutely want to get um, 100%? So a mag is not a bad idea. I like that. Okay, okay, yes. <laughs> Everybody wants a potassium. But there's one other one I'm thinking of. If this guy turns out to be fast, yes, trope, but it might be falsely elevated. Sodium, yeah, he maybe he's drinking too much water. TSH, Wendy, yes, TSH. Okay, so we absolutely, when we have somebody fast, we want to get a TSH. Good. Okay. Um, so here's the, the here's the EKG. We're just gonna for a minute focus on what we think the rhythm is. Okay. So if we go over here. We've got our long lead strip, right? We only assess on the long lead. And what do you guys think the rhythm is? So type in the chat, what do you think this rhythm is? And I'm gonna, while you guys are typing that, I just wanna point out for anybody who's not able to identify quickly that we have a fast 131. We also have a, let me get a different color because this is not really working out great. Let's go over here and we'll do the R to R, okay? So the R to R is irregular. So we have a fast, narrow, complex, irregular rhythm with a star, a star, an asterisk in the PR interval, okay? So this is actually AFib, yes, Brandy and Lewis and um, Kelsey and Noel. So Kelsey actually added a little, a little extra on there, which is completely appropriate. So thank you, Kelsey. Um, this is a patient with, yes, AFib, irregularly irregular, but also with RVR, which stands for rapid ventricular response, because their heart rate is over 100. Okay, so AFib with RVR, you have a ventricular response over 100. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, we're really glad we got all those labs that you guys recommended. So, that was good. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, uh, this patient needed uh, a lot of things, and stopping the energy drinks and alcohol was high on the list. Also, sleeping. Um, Sleep apnea could also be something that, that is this, this patient's problem as well. Um, okay, so I'm just going to touch a little bit on heart blocks just really quickly. Um, and we do want to get you into our small groups sessions. So um, we're gearing up for that. But I do want to just shout out a special thank you to um, if anybody follows uh, the visual nurse on Instagram, he actually let us borrow a strip tonight to show you. And so the moral of the story with heart blocks is that learning the family analogy, the mom P wave and the dad QRS is really key. There is a video if you want to watch it that I explain heart blocks in like a minute and a half. And it's in the Sunday stories guide at the top of the group. And it's just called heart blocks. And uh, you can watch that anytime if you want to watch the full thing. It's already in our group recorded for you. I drew it on the board so you could watch over my shoulder. But the, the marriage is really the issue, the mom and the dad. So here's the key about detecting what kind of heart block that you have. It's all about the marriage, the relationship between the mom and the dad, okay? And the, the husband and the wife, we actually, in, a, in the marriage analogy that I talked to you on the little video, I talk about a marriage gone bad 
it's kind of like a soap opera theme. So, you know, nobody's actual marriage, but we look for patterns. We look for grouping and we measure the PR interval. That's the three keys to really figuring out what's going on. So um, when we do that, we always answer our questions, okay? Um, so I don't know, Michelle, if you're able to copy and paste the link of that video, maybe? If you can find it in Sunday Stories, maybe we can post it in the chat and they can watch it that way if they have a hard time finding it. So this is a sample. This is from the visual nurse um, who, who quite graciously lent us this strip tonight to go with our talk, okay? So the question is always, what is the husband and the wife doing? So when you have a first degree block, we talked about that already, we have just a prolonged PR interval, okay? So it's longer than 200 milliseconds. But the P, the mom and the dad, they always stand the same distance away from each other. So when we talk about heart blocks, the question is twofold. So first of all, is there any pattern? Is there any grouping? And what's the relationship between the mom and the dad? So would you guys agree with me that the mom and the dad, when they're standing together, are standing the same distance apart? Would you guys agree? When they're together, yes? Okay, good. And yes, um, actually, Valeria identified that there's a dropped QRS. There is a dropped QRS. So when the rhythm is here, it's regular and it drops a QRS, so we still have a mom, but no dad. So does anybody wanna take a stab at what kind of heart block this is? Does anybody wanna take a stab? So normal PR interval, PRs are consistent, and then they drop a QRS every once in a while. So consistent PR with drop QRSs, this is a second degree, but what type? There's two types, so what type is it? Yes, it's a Mobitz. Okay, good, Ginny B. Joelle, yes, type two. Um, so yes, this is a type two Mobitz heart block. Okay, consistent PR interval with dropped QRS. And this is what he kind of drew um, on one of our strips that we had. So this was a little bit different one. You can see his, his style, it's kind of cool. Um, he's showing you the distance between the PR. This is actually a type one second degree heart block. And he's got you know the short, longer, longest, drop, rinse, and then repeat. Okay, so short, longer, longest, drop, and then you start back with a longer, or sorry, short, longer, longest, drop. So you've got varying lengthening PR intervals with a drop QRS. So this is it all written out. Um, you can actually pause and watch this over again if you want to go back, um, but this kind of is, is on steroids, right? <laughs> How to dissect a strip. So this is kind of fun. Um, okay. So this is what we're gonna talk about in our breakout session. So hopefully you guys all printed out your workbook. This is page two, we only have one page we're gonna go over tonight with four strips and we'll be doing that in our small group sessions. See, Tori doesn't even, she's not even medical and she understands EKGs just by coming to this class. I mean, that's just, that's amazing. Um, all right, so jumping off. Okay, Epic went down, that's okay, no worries, Jen. Um, so we're going to go into the breakout sessions now, and uh, I know that was a little bumpy last night going into the breakout sessions, um, but we're going to get you guys into them. We have about, I don't know, uh, let's see, how many people do we have on Zoom, Michelle? Okay, we have 38, so we're going to be uh, dividing you up. Can you transfer? So we're going to go to the, Zoom, to the special um, breakout sessions. And then inside there, we're going to talk about some slides. And um, also, we're going to um, actually stop the streaming. So we're going to stop the share for just a second. And I'm going to stop our streaming on Facebook. So if you want to join us in Zoom, come and hop on and join us. In so um, I think we're back in the main session. So we're going to go ahead and um, just do a quick wrap up. So Michelle, any um, any brilliant takeaways from our from our session in your group? See if we can find you, Michelle. I think you're on mute. Yeah, I'm on mute now. I don't know how I, I've got a different view on my camera here. How did it go in your session with you? I, I thought it went pretty well. Um, we added a couple a couple of things on the heart blocks. Um, because you had mentioned it on there so and I told everybody we did the tag and then um, I gave my little scenario about the heart blocks if there's something missing if there's a missing QRS you're in second degree 
Now you just have to figure out if it's type one or type two. Awesome. So that's always my favorite. That's my, my way I can remember it. No, see, it's good help hearing it from different people. So yeah. um, uh, tell us with a thumbs up, do you want to do another breakout session tomorrow? Or, or no? What do you guys think? Yes or no? Let's see. Thumbs up in the chat. Okay, we have some thumbs. <laughs> Karen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do another breakout session tomorrow. I'm glad that, glad that was super helpful. Um, we enjoy doing them as well. So we're going to give away um, a couple prizes. Um, we're going to do the hashtag tonight. And I'm going to show you what this is. And we'll be giving these away tomorrow night. So we're going to be giving away a lot of prizes tomorrow night. We're giving away these EKG badges. So I'm just going to see if this is on my actual badge. I can't show you my badge, right? Because my work would get me in trouble. But this is the, the prize we're going to give you tonight. Okay. So if you're entering to win, this is a RCAT badge. And this is basically a great little tool with a little line through the middle where you can go over and look at the ST segment to see if it's elevated or depressed. So we're gonna give away tomorrow four of these. So if you wanna win this, put hashtag RCAT in the chat, okay? Hashtag RCAT in the Zoom chat and we'll be picking uh, from your names tomorrow when we get started. Also, um, tomorrow night, just to let you know, we're gonna be covering 12 leads. And so tomorrow night might run, might run a little bit long. We'll also be giving away the scholarships tomorrow night to our, our class that starts Monday. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, tomorrow night if you wanna join us. Um, but we're basically gonna do, Michelle and I are gonna do a class over September where we're gonna do stuff like this like all month long. So if you're into hanging out with us and you're into learning in this type of style, um, you wanna consider joining us in that next class. So we've got you on, let's see, we got you all our cat. So um, Chris says is tomorrow night tape. So it will be recorded except for the breakout sessions. And so we can't record those, but everything else will. But we like that because we get to have like good conversations with you guys on uh, the Zoom, Facebook uh, breakout groups. So anyway, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, remember the time zone. It's actually 530 Pacific Standard, so 830 EST. And we'll see you guys all tomorrow unless anybody has any questions. Any questions or comments? Anyone? Hey, Una? No, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Hey. It <laughs> looks Linda. I have a. Yeah, Linda, I see you. Yeah. Let me mute my TV if I could find my remote. Sorry, my dog likes to eat it and I have to hide it. Okay. Um, clarify something for me. Mm -hmm. Earlier in the class with the Q wave. Yes. You called it pathologic and said it was bad. Mm -hmm. Did I? I just want to clarify because on the day one notes, it says it is normal if it is one third of the height of the R wave. So it has to be less than a third, the height of the R. If it's more than a third, that's okay. yeah, good, good clarification. And Linda, okay. you're, you're in our 30 day EKG challenge. So we actually cover the Q wave in, in depth um, in the workshop. I don't know if you got to come okay. to the workshop. Did you I come didn't. in? It's all, I'm okay. getting ready to go do that this coming weekend. We actually cover that. Um, in detail in the first that was on the Saturday. Um, Saturday. So part, part one. Yeah, we cover the four times that Q waves are bad. Okay. So that's something you might want to deep dive into. But thank you for clarifying. Um, right. Anybody else has questions? Bring them on. We want to hear them. Karen or Muna, anything? No, thank you. Okay. All right. Then we'll see you guys tomorrow. It was a pleasure. And Michelle, as always, thank you for being such a wonderful, amazing coach. We thank love you so much. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.